27 years of age. And Meltrick Taylor, just 19, so a real age discrepancy here, Al. Indeed, and Arthur, the, one of the grand old men, if you will, at the age of 26 of the Cuban team. He is 6-1 and one versus the USA in dual competitions. He's been fighting for a long time, and uh, he's been around a long time on that team and an excellent fighter. In the 83 USA-Cuba meet, he stopped Dino Ramirez of the United States in one. There's a good look at Meldrick Taylor. Philadelphia, and he fights out of the smoking Joe Frazier gym in his first dual meet uh, of an international nature. So right now, probably going through his mind are some uh, thoughts about just where he's at. Well, he is at the Lawler Special Events Center in Reno, Nevada, <laughs> and this is the fourth bout in the USA-Cuba dual meet. The Cubans with a 2-1 lead right now over the United States. Now, when a, a team from Cuba comes into our country, this is a big, big event for them because they're priming themselves, obviously, for the Olympic Games, but this is what these young men do, you know, for a living. They might have occupations as teachers and students and whatever, but, I mean, this is what they do. Whereas, on the other hand, we're in a different situation. Well, that's been talked about a lot, and it, it remains true. These fighters like Ortha, for instance, at the age of 26, still a member of this uh, this team. He has been brought to almost every international event, as evidenced by that 6-1 and one record. And in Taylor, as I said, a fighter in only his first. So it's obvious the Americans usually suffer from experience problems because of the turnover. Meldrick Taylor, just three years of boxing experience. Horta, on the other hand, with 10 years. And good exchange on the inside by these two fighters. And you can see right now that Horta has a long, rangy frame. And he's going to use that left jab effectively. Meldrick Taylor, just knowing that he comes from the Joe Frazier gym, tells you that he is not afraid to mix it up on the inside. And we already see one calling card from virtually every fighter that's trained at that gym, and that is good left hook. Yes, indeed. Good left hook, as Al Bernstein just said, by Meldrick Taylor out of the smoking Joe Frazier gym in Philadelphia. His coach is Willie Rush. When you look at the people that Horta has beaten uh, among the Americans, it's like a who's who of our amateur program. He beat Bernard Taylor, fine featherweight, Jackie Beard, and also Wayne Linus. He lost to Rocky Lockridge, who is now the junior lightweight champion of the world. So he's faced good Americans from really uh, several eras. Absolutely. Clifford Gray, too, can be thrown in there. Horta with a three-inch height advantage. He is five feet eight. Taylor, five five. Right now, Roger, he is probably surprised at the hand speed and aggressiveness of Meldrick Taylor, uh, a fighter who was unknown to Orson, and uh, he's finding him a tough man. Orson does a good job. He's really up on his toes. He's a very fine technician in the ring. Oh, good straight right. And buckle the knees of Meldrick Taylor. And Orson moves in now, and he has Taylor in trouble. But look at Taylor fight back. in a hurry as Horta had him in some trouble and a good right hand and that stunned Taylor. Good left by Taylor and Taylor comes back with his own right so Melder Taylor and Horta in a brawl. And another good right by Taylor. Oh the nose of Meldrick Taylor bleeding both nostrils and the fans in Reno Nevada cheering on the youngster out of Philadelphia PA. Incredible round. <laughs> has got to take a step back and say, hey, this is not any ordinary 19-year-old I'm in against. And I tell you, the character of Meldrick Taylor came to the forefront when he was hit with that big right hand. Horta, an experienced fighter, was all over him. Meldrick not only didn't give up, was able to rally back very effectively. And he sticks in a left jab to Horta's chin. Time running down in the first round. Three rounds. 125-pound classification. Featherweights, Meldrick Taylor of Philadelphia and Adolfo Horta of Cuba. What are we with you? Reno, Nevada, the side of this USA-Cuba dual meet and a most encouraging and impressive first round for the youngster from Philadelphia, Meldrick Taylor. He's giving away eight years and light years of experience to uh, Adolfo Horta. But to, in that first round, he gained the respect of Horta and hurt him with some tremendous right hands toward the end of that round. 
Horta got off first in that opening three minutes, but as Al mentioned, Taylor was able to come back and really finish with a flurry, and he's coming right back at the veteran now. Good combination punching by Taylor. Taylor has a, a habit of leaving himself open when he throws those combinations. He throws them a little bit wide, but uh, he throws them so quickly and with such force, it's hard to, it's hard to hit him. Al, do you get the feeling that maybe Horta has watched Sugar Ray Leonard box on one or two occasions? I just noticed his shoelaces, some of his movements. Style is a little bit reminiscent. That's a good point. And now, what, this is a good example of why the cliche about the Cuban boxer is just that. They fight with a lot of different styles, and it, the lateral movement of Horta is a good example. Meldrick Taylor of Philadelphia. Second round. I would be interested in the scoring of that first round. And I would say a very tough round to score, but uh, I would tend to lean a little bit toward Taylor because I thought for the last third of that round he did so, uh, so well. Taylor has been the aggressor as far as throwing punches in this round. We've seen a lot of movement from Horta. But he is keeping his distance, if you will. He wants to box Taylor from the outside. That's obvious. When Taylor gets inside and throws those combinations like that, he's a very effective fighter. Taylor has a brother named Eldrick. A twin brother. Yeah, and his name is Meldrick. Meldrick and Eldrick. How does anybody keep him straight? with a lot of poise and a lot of confidence and uh, Horta content to box him from long range and uh, whether that will win the favor of the judges remains to be seen. Featherweight classification, 125 pounds and once again, Taylor came into the body then went upstairs with the left hook and a good combination and let's see how they rule that. They're going to count it a knockdown. It looked like there was a short right hand yes. that may have landed in there. Presumably, that counts no more than a, a good punch. Taylor thought the round was over, started heading to his corner. There are seconds remaining. Now, Horta came inside, and Taylor was able to connect with a right. Good second round. Really, Taylor had dominated. Uh, his nose was bloodied in the first round by Horta, but in international boxing, you can't just go on knockdowns or bloody nose. So there's a lot more to it in scoring. Well, it'd be interesting to test the scoring, uh, which incidentally is done by two Cuban judges, two Americans, and one neutral judge in each of these fights. Uh, presumably, in the amateurs, that knockdown counts, counts no more than one good punch. We'll see if the judges score it that way, and what a wild exchange oh, in the these, corner. These two are really mixing it up right now. The youngster, Meldrick Taylor, 19 years of age, that bloody nose being attended to by the referee, and 26-year-old Adolfo Horta, who has defeated, as Al mentioned earlier, a list of who's who in American boxing in that weight classification. And we can add to the list I mentioned earlier, Davey Armstrong. Uh, he was beaten by Horta on the way to Horta winning the 1979 Pan American Games title, and Horta, by the way, won the silver medal in 1980 Olympics, which, of course, the United States boycotted. The nose still bleeding, causing some problems for Meldrick Taylor right now. This youngster has just grown in confidence throughout this battle. What a great learning experience. Uh, this is going to be a valuable fight, win or lose or draw. And he's been hurt by Horta by a couple of times by those right hands in the first and in the second when he was knocked down. The thing is, though, Al, he's been hurt, but he's come back, and he's been landing good combinations in this round. He's been landing the combinations and moving back. I think in, in number of punches, uh, Taylor, I think, has the edge in terms of the amount that he's landed. Al Horta has shown us a lot of that ring movement and not really throwing a lot of punches, a lot of stylish work. And there is Taylor getting the job done in the corner. Uh, he slips down, and yes, that is a slip. And we've seen from Taylor some balance problems, and that was an indication of he's only 18 years old and is still in the learning process. But he's got the raw ability, I think, to put himself in the hunt to represent us at the Olympics. He's got a 
contend with people like Bernard Gray in the 125 pound division. And sometimes he fights in the 132 weight category where Clifford Gray and Pernell Whitaker are waiting. Is this characteristic of Horta's style, or is he just trying to keep out of the way of the shots? No, I think it is. He likes to use lateral movement. He might be using a little bit more in this fight than normal, though. Meldrick Taylor, born in October 1965 in Philadelphia, still lives there and trains at the Smoking Joe Frazier gym. As Al mentioned, you, you better learn a left hook there. And, this, and there's the left hook right there. And another good combination. We heard you. Tough fight to score at this point because it's been a lot of give and take and those wild exchanges, hard to know who really had the edge. Taylor has been most impressive because he has shown some effective punching, and there is a good right hand by Meldrick Taylor. He has been hurt, and he has come back from being hurt to fight effectively. And there's a late punch, and the two exchange blows after the bell. Horta hit him after the bell, and uh, as Meldrick Taylor looks at the crowd, he thinks that he is the winner in this. He's psyched year up in the out. Well, he had an excellent outing for his first dual meet international competition. We will take a look at toward the end of that round, Taylor a right hand off the head of Orton. Here's that left hook that we talked about, going to both the body and the head. See the hand speed of Taylor. He threw combinations throughout this fight. And that's where he slipped. As Al mentioned, he did have some balance problems. Horta had three inches on him, a little more height. We look at from a different angle, some uh, other action. And the left hook of Taylor was a recurring theme in this fight. It's a punch that, if anything, uh, would help him get this decision. You know, we've talked about how tough it is for the Americans to face the experienced Cubans. What about a guy like Corte? He's faced seven or eight Americans. They just keep coming at him. He's, he's got an 18-year-old from Philadelphia he knows nothing about, and all of a sudden he's in the fight of his life. So it's tough for him also. There's a good look at Meldrick Taylor. You can tell his nose. I, I think he, the, the top of his nose might even be skinned just a bit. Uh, it was bleeding throughout the fight that uh, nose was bloodied in the opening round. Taylor did take a standing eight count in the second round as a short right hand from Horta caught him right on the button but he came back from that and fought very effectively throughout and I think this is going to be a very close decision just looking at it from our point of view you'd say well maybe the veteran Horta ought to get it but then again sometimes you've got to make room for the newcomer we'll see